in like in the UK, for example, midwives are considered the experts in natural birth. And then the doctors would be doing cesareans and forceps, for example. So, um, yeah, so midwives are very, it's a very different role in the UK and Australia versus Singapore. Midwives are growing in popularity in the recent years, but their role is still largely misunderstood. And I think in many countries, uh, midwifery is often regarded as a different choice. It's not necessarily maybe the first route in some countries, especially predominantly in Asia, um, as compared to OBGYN care. But midwifery has um, benefited mothers for centuries, and it's been across it's been available across many cultures for so long so i wanted to take this opportunity to find out what a midwife really is i have only ever heard of obgyns when it came to pregnancies and delivering babies and then i came across a relation of a relation of mine who was a midwife based in australia and i was a bit confused because i'd never actually heard of the term midwife before but in so many other countries and cultures uh, across the world, midwives have been always, you know, it was quite synonymous with, you know, birth of children and midwives being present or being delivered by a midwife. And I was always very curious um, on what a midwife was. And I was trying to figure out, is it a, is, are they semi-doctors? Are they nurses? And that kind of led me to create this episode and I would I'm very excited to basically get Natasha Cullen on from Beloved Bump Singapore. Natasha is a antenatal instructor. She is also a midwife herself. She's the founder of Beloved Bumps here in Singapore. Um, but she also founded the Beloved Bumps organization when she was based in London. Natasha grew up in Singapore and she moved to London. She got her Bachelor of Science degree in midwifery. And she got experience in some of London's top hospitals regarding high and low risk pregnancies. And in 2012, it's when she started the Beloved Bumps organization to provide women with interactive and unbiased pre and postnatal classes. In 2017, she brought the organization from London to Singapore and has been providing fun and interactive classes ever since. So today I am going to talk all about midwives and midwifery with Natasha Cullen, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Hi, Natasha. Welcome to Ship with Tribra. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Uh, I just wanted you to come on here to tell us a little bit more about what is a midwife and what does a midwife exactly do uh, throughout the course of you know, a mother's pregnancy, for example. Could you elaborate a little bit? Yeah, sure. So um, a midwife, well, traditionally means with women. So um, we are trained to be looking after uh, women in their pregnancy, throughout their labor and birth, and also to care for them and their babies postnatally as well. Um, but as you can probably tell already, it's mainly actually about the mums. So a lot of people want to be a midwife because they love babies, but actually they're probably in the wrong profession. Uh, midwife is very much about the mother. Um, it does vary in different countries as to um, what a midwife does. So um, I was trained in the UK and in the UK you would be seen by a midwife only throughout your pregnancy. Uh, we would be looking after you throughout your labor. We would be there at the birth and then we would look after you at home as well. So unless there was a high risk pregnancy or there was something wrong like you know, during the labor, then that's when you may see a doctor, but actually sometimes you may not even see a doctor throughout the whole way through your pregnancy and labor and birth. Um, in Singapore, it's a little bit different. So um, here it's more obstetric nursing. So everyone here is booked underneath an obstetrician. And so the midwives will be in the hospital and they will be um, looking after you throughout your labor. They'll be doing a lot of the things as well for your labor and birth. But the doctor will be the one making those decisions and they will be the one who are there at the birth as well. Um, so it's a little bit different here compared to other countries. So what are the things that you do in terms, in terms of like procedures, in terms of caring for the mom in pre or during the birth or postnatally? In the UK, you mean? In the UK, yeah. Yep, so um, they would see us, uh, week, well, not weekly, sorry, they would see us at set stages of um, 
weeks pregnancy for their um, care. So we would check blood pressures, make sure that they um, haven't got any things like protein in the urine. We would feel mum's tummy to make sure that baby's growing okay. We would listen into the fetal heartbeat um, and then just generally answering any questions, giving advice. So sort of like at what stage of pregnancy they're at depends on which advice we're giving. We might need to take some blood tests as well, which we would do. Um, so we would do those at every appointment throughout pregnancy. And then in the labor, we would be basically, normally we're assigned to one-to-one -one care. So it means that we're assigned one woman only and we would sit with them for the whole of our 12 hour shift um, until we go home again. And if they happen to have a baby in the meantime, then that's great. Um, but all the care that's revolving in that 12 hours would be done by us as well. Okay, and then here in Singapore, would you be doing something of a similar nature then? As well. So in Singapore, in the pregnancy, we don't see them as midwives. Um, I'm not registered here, but they they wouldn't. They, you're seeing your doctor. That's what you're paying them for mm -hmm. in your pregnancy. So there's not really any midwives in the pregnancy part. And in the hospital, um, the midwives can make some decisions in terms of whether to do an examination, for example. However, most of the care is led by the doctor. So they would feed back to the doctor, who would then be making those plans of care. Right. Okay. And so if someone wanted, like, why would they hire a midwife if they were in Singapore then? What would be the benefits of hiring a midwife? So you don't really hire midwives in Singapore. In Singapore, um, you hire doulas. Mm -hmm. um, they would about your labor and birth. So uh, normally a doula is not medical, uh, medically trained. So they are women who have an interest in birth or a mothers themselves. And they do a course and they, you know, obviously become very familiar with birth, but they're not medically trained. Um, so a lot of women in Singapore do hire doulas because you don't get one-to-one -one care here with a midwife. So when you're admitted to the hospital, you're often left alone with your birth partner. Um, and the midwives will also have someone else in labor potentially as well. So they're not there to help you with, you know, position changes or breathing or massage or things like that. Um, and therefore your doula would be there who you know through your pregnancy and then they would be helping you throughout your labor and birth. Um, and the midwives would just be kind of there to oversee it all. Right. So do you, so essentially would the midwife also be at least the ones that, for example, your role in Singapore, are you mm. considered more of a midwife or are you considered more of a doula? I'm guessing you have both certification. That's kind of why it overlaps for you. But yeah. uh, so it would, would it be something of both, uh, would it be of a similar nature in terms of what are the things that you're doing in the room with mum? Yeah, so in the hospitals here, we are acting as doulas. We are not acting as midwives. Um, I'm not uh, registered as a midwife in Singapore, so I cannot do anything medically related uh, in Singapore. So it's a very it's a very difficult line to initially not cross, um, but it's one that we can also settle into quite well. It's taking all the liability away from us, and we don't have to worry about writing notes and taking paperwork and doing all the medical stuff, and we can actually just be with women, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, in Singapore... Uh, if you're not a registered midwife, then you can't do anything medical. So we are seeing more, more as doulas here. But in other countries, a midwife could also potentially deliver births. Is that correct? Yep. So, yeah. So, I mean, I've delivered thousands of babies. I mean, I haven't delivered okay. them in the past, but I've been there to assist mums at the birth of thousands of babies. Yeah. Um, so in like in the UK, for example, midwives are considered the experts in natural birth. And then the doctors would be doing cesareans and forceps, for example. So, um, yeah, so midwives are very, it's a very different role in the UK and Australia versus Singapore. And midwives in general are considered, it's quite a, it's quite an old tradition in a way, isn't it? Like the birth of a midwife sort of like in, as a role in terms of childbirth, wasn't it sort of historically always like an elder in the family type of thing? What, what was the history of midwives? How did it come about? Um, that's a very good question. I'm not really sure. Um, but yes, traditionally, like, you know, if you look at villages, there'll be one kind of like grandma who is the midwife for that village. Um, you know, even back in the UK and like the, you know, in the early days, the midwife was really highly regarded in the, in the village. If you saw your midwife, you know, people would let them on the bus for free. They would, you know, they had a really like a, a position of not power. That's the wrong word, but you know, like just like a lot of respect for the midwives. Like high so, regard, yeah. Yeah, wow. and it's, yeah, it's kind of, I mean, it's changed a lot now um, because of the way that healthcare has changed. But um, yeah, it's still, it, yeah, I imagine in some villages now and traditions, it's still very much, a, you know, the, the grandma of the village is the one who's there at the birth, um, mm. which would be really cool. And why did you become a midwife then? I mean, you could have gone and become an obstetrician or a gynecologist, I guess, if you 
wanted I that. Could have <laughs> I could have, I uh, guess, right? Well, I, I just always wanted to be a doctor. So um, I did all of my A levels and I was applying to university, about to apply for medicine. And then I was actually in Singapore at the time with my family and did a, a work placement with a doctor. And I was just really uh, disheartened by the lack of time that doctors get to spend with their patients. And I'm very much a people person. I like to get to know couples. I like to get to talk to them. And so uh, being a doctor just went off the table for me. And so I went back to the drawing board and literally just thought, what else can I do in a medical profession where I get to spend more time with patients, but also have the autonomy of a doctor. Um, and so I thought about things like physio, so physiotherapy, I did think about being having a nurse, but with a nurse, you're still working underneath the doctor mainly as well. Um, and then my mum kind of just said, well, what about a midwife? And being in Singapore at that time, I had no idea what a midwife was. Yeah. Uh, I went away and researched it. And I was that really idiotic student who turned up to the interview and said, I love babies, so I'll be a midwife. Um, and then little did I know, actually, it happened to be the profession that I loved and um, was not what I expected it to be. <laughs> and I just kind of, yeah, just fell my way. I know a lot of my... Um, university classmates were um kind of wanting to be midwives from birth in the uk because they kind of knew about it but i was definitely one that kind of slipped through the net but it happened for a reason i guess <laughs> yeah and i mean do you see that midwifery itself will ever come to singapore in the capacity that it's there in australia or in london for example I, in the uk if i can set it up by the time i leave singapore then that'll be my dreams come true i would love for Singapore to have a midwife-led birthing center. Um, that would be a dream. I don't know whether it would ever happen. I guess it will take a lot of moving government politicians and things around to get them to see that kind of thing. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if it does. I mean, it's probably one of the only countries that doesn't have midwives. Um, so it would be nice to see a change. It'd be nice for them to support things like home births and sort of that normal midwifery led care as opposed to everything being obstetric led um but we'll see i guess why do you think it would be a good thing uh to have midwives um i guess because well if you look at the way that like say for example all of these doctors are trained um if they are training in a country where midwifery care is the main kind of thing for normal birth these guys have no practice in delivering babies normally so you know when they come into a country then which is obstetric led um they, they, ha they don't have that experience. And so that's why things like cesarean rates are really high in obstetric leg countries. Episiotomy rates are through the roof here because they're not used to seeing a perineum tear. They're not used to spending that time with a woman and knowing that actually it can take a little bit longer sometimes. They're not used to seeing those things because it's normal um, and they only get called in when there's an issue. So it's just much more medical when you get doctors involved. Whereas when you are, you know, if you're, you're not sick when you're a mid uh, when you're pregnant you are healthy you're having a baby and so you don't need doctors around necessarily uh, if you have a normal low risk pregnancy with no complications um, midwives are there to be trained to look after you so we just keep things more normal we keep we have higher vaginal birth rates we have less epidural rates you know um, even things like even having a doula lessens all of those as well so um yeah that's that's why it would be a good thing and what other countries in Asia actually are pro midwifery compared to Singapore? Would you know? Mm, not, but yeah, I mean, not many to be honest. Um, I know that Hong Kong have got midwives who can practice as midwives in community. So they've like, got midwife run centers. So you can go along to have your baby's heart rate checked, for example, in Hong Kong. Um, you, I don't know whether they have midwifery led care there though, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. I definitely, Asia is very different, you know, obviously Europe, is is big on midwives um you know holland uh you know france all, all of those countries are midwifery led um but yeah asia's still to kind of catch on and as your role in beloved bumps is it predominantly doula is it a is it a combination of doula mixed with midwifery type of services that you offer what is it that you offer specifically yeah so i mean we uh, use our midwifery skills so we teach our prenatal education that's all done by midwives um, being a doula is great but um, just kind of understanding the medical uh, aspects behind all of the procedures and things really helps I think uh, when you're teaching prenatal education um, and also just things like staying on top of all the evidence you know we get uh, signed up to you know, in the UK, we have the Royal College of Midwives, so we're constantly kept up to date with guidelines and policies and just being really familiar with working within policies and guidelines is, is something which, you know, if you're not a midwife, you may not be used to. 
Um, and then we do our midwife home visits. So again, not acting as a midwife as such, but just being able to look at a baby and pick out things which may not be right, just from years of experience of examining babies, um, whether they're feeding well, so we have lactation ex um, uh, experience, um, just asking mum, so knowing how to question a mum whether she's okay, asking her the right questions to know whether she's healing well. You know, these are part and parcel of what we do as midwives in the UK when we visit mums at home. And that's what we're doing in Beloved Bump. So although we're not physically, you know, making sure our uterus is contracted, we can ask the same questions to kind of gauge whether everything's okay as well. Um, and then in, when we go into hospital and supporting women in labor, then that's our doula side. And um, so we kind of have two hats on here, um, but using all of it together as it complements each other. Great. Okay. And um, what is the one shift that you want to create in the world or for your clients with your service? Uh, well, I mean, the biggest shift in Singapore would be to have midwifery-led care in Singapore. That would definitely be a major shift. <laughs> um, just have it recognized, or even if it's not possible to have midwifery-led births, to have a postnatal midwife visit service, which is recognized that is offered to all women. Um, out of all of the roles that I play within Beloved Bumps, my absolute favorite and the one which I think makes the biggest difference to any clients is visiting them at home at day three, day four, when they're first home from the hospital and just being there to answer the list of questions that we get. They're always the same questions, but just being there physically to support them emotionally with lactation, with just things like bathing a baby or how, you know, how do you know which, whether the cot is in the right place, that kind of thing um, makes a massive difference. So definitely having that for all women would be, would be huge. Awesome. Yeah, sounds like a much needed role for Sro in Singapore and other Asian countries, I think. Thank yeah. you so much, Natasha, for sharing all this about Windwives, and I wish you the very best. Thank you very much. Have a good Thank day. Thank you. You too.